Welcome, everybody. Um, I am new to the webinar process as well. I can't see you, but Kath has assured me that I'm not really just sitting in my office talking to myself again. So my name is Michael Follett. Uh, my main qualification to be able to talk to you today is my status as a former child. Uh, and I hope that at least some of my audience today are, are also former children. I'm also founder and director of Outdoor Planned Learning or OPAL and genuinely thank you so much for joining us today from right across the globe. I can't tell you how thrilled I am that we have so many participants from so many countries um, and so many schools. We had no idea when we were planning this event that it would generate this amount of interest. So some of you are going to be reconnecting with us after an enforced break. Um, and others have come along because you want to get ideas for improving play in your schools or uh, you have no idea what, what OPAL is or, or what we do. Over the past 20 years, I've been trying to work out how to achieve OPAL's single goal. And that is every primary school child has an amazing playtime every day with no exceptions. And that means no exceptions based on gender on race, on background, on the amount of space that your school has or doesn't have, if you love football and sport and PE, or if you absolutely loathe it, if your school has got pots of money to spend, or if you're in deficit budget. Because we believe that no childhood is complete without loads of really rich outdoor social play every single day. At Opal, we believe that play is the foundation for happiness, socialization and physical and mental well-being. And for one really simple reason, that every child wants to and needs to play. So I'm guessing that's what you believe as well, because you've, you've already come along, you're spending a couple of hours with us of your precious time to share experiences with your colleagues and thoughts about play in schools. So I want to tell you just a little bit about Opal. Uh, we're a UK-based not-for-profit organisation uh, dedicated to helping schools transform every single aspect of their practice and their culture so that they can go from being okay at providing play to being amazing, outstanding every day. Schools enrolled in, involved enrolled in the Opal Primary Programme work with an assigned mentor through a, a series of structured meetings over about 18 months um, from their initial audit on 18 criteria right through to their awards audit 18 months later. And we create an individual action plan based on, on their needs and their children and their grounds to transform culture and practice. And I think what is special about the OPA process is the quality of the mentorship that we provide. All of our mentors are, are handpicked from really the top of their game uh, so that we can uh, provide really good support and take you through all of the excitements and the challenges that you will have on a journey of transforming the culture of your school. So all of the heads that you're going to be hearing from today work in schools that are in some stage of the OPAL programme or have completed it. Now, often senior leaders are surprised by the next statistic, but it's true. Did you realise that out of seven years children spend at your school, 1.4 of those years will be spent at play? So can you think of another area of school life that takes up the equivalent of one day a week that you don't have a strategic approach for, that you're not based on a clear set of values and policy, that you don't have designated strategic and operational leadership, a plan how to make it better, an evaluation framework, and most importantly, a, tra a workforce trained in appropriate skills. And the answer is probably no, there's no other area of school life that you would have that takes 20% that would have those things missing. I want to show you now uh, a film from one of my favorite schools. Um, I wonder maybe schools are like children, I'm not meant to have favorites, uh, but too late. Uh, Claire Green is head of St Michael's Juniors in Twerton. Uh, Twerton is included in 10% of the most deprived wards in the country and has 67% of children on free school meals. 
And in the past, playtimes have been a source of anxiety, behavior incidents, uh, things that escalate eventually maybe into exclusion and a, and a drain on staff's time. From when I first started working at, at the school with Claire, it was clear that if Claire, Claire said the play was going to be better, it was going to be better. There was no doubt about that. So we're going to have a little watch at a film now uh, of what play looks like at the school now, uh, narrated by Claire. Three years of play development in three minutes. Now there's a challenge. St Michael's was dominated by a playground, football and a few fights. So we bought tyres, lots of them. We bought random loose parts. We gave the children lots of places to play. They had endless fun with foam fingers. What would you do with your friends in a table frame? Or maybe you like to play on your own with a net curtain. I wonder what these children are talking about. We had weeks of fun with some donated water butts. They allowed us to risk take. The adults stopped saying stop and we stopped saying no. We then looked towards developing our mud kitchen area. The children enjoyed digging their own water course and we used some old office furniture to expand the area they could use. It was really popular in those early days. We benefited from the expertise of Bath Area Play Project and had tyres. You need lots of tyres. Our staff were empowered and our play team really get involved. We had a very long hammock phase and the children just preferred to do this on this expensive play equipment. We magpied the idea of a play bus from St Xavier's Juniors and we let the children play on the slopes where previously we hadn't. We welcomed wheels into our playground and we used equipment that was only ever used in lessons. We have plans for the future for our site and thought about how we could use it differently. We reuse, we recycle, and we love a big box. Our new year threes benefit from the great work done at the infants. More tires. And this tree was used as a den support and a rocket. We've had to defend our messy and muddy play. And we simply share our joy. We use our whole site every day in every play. We play in all weathers. because it's not play if you don't get dirty. In this next shot, can you see our social pod and the buried child? We plan, we make costumes, we build huge dens and some smaller ones. We climb trees, we share and we play together. We get wet, we have fun and we use our imagination. We challenge ourselves because it is our human right to play. Three years of play development in three minutes. Now there's a challenge. St Michael's was... Fantastic. Lovely. Right. I think... What came across most about that is the changing culture from the culture of no to the culture of yes. That that's what that that's what happened at that school. That the the answer to the question, can I do this, is well, why not? Let's think about it. Um, and Claire was motivated to improve play because she thought that that was the right thing to do for her children. And although that was her motivation, the benefits have been considerable. So compared to the previous years before Opal, we've gone from three permanent exclusions to zero. The full time equivalent of exclusions from 73 days to 3.5 days, from 400 low level behaviour incidents per year to 53 from 11 serious major incidents at lunchtime to zero. And as Claire said, for a cost of £3.50 per pupil, that's quite a bargain. We have to say that, of course, that was alongside other work that Claire was doing at the school, but I think Opal did have a considerable effect on that. 
So the real challenge that I have learned from working with hundreds of schools is not so much in making changes because children love novelty. So a quick change will always make improvement, but it's, it's making them sustainable. And making permanent changes to school takes a long time and it's, it's a really hard thing to make it stick. It's a bit like trying to hang wallpaper with really rubbish glue. You fix one bit, you move on to the next wall, you look back and the bit that you started on is coming unstuck. So whatever kind of school you come from, I hope that you can identify with at least one of the speakers. We've picked them because of their differences. Tiny village schools, large urban ones, ones with massive grounds, ones with tiny bits of asphalt. And I hope that the today inspires you and gives you some ideas how to make improvements to your school. So please enjoy the talks, borrow the ideas that you want to, and if things do become unstuck, do give us a call. Our Opal Mentors are hugely experienced and we have spent 20 years working at how to make things work in every type of school to make permanent and sustainable change. So I'll see you uh, at the end of the session uh, for the plenary and do enjoy our speakers. Thank you.